Good morning, everybody. My name is Michael Fox, and welcome back to more Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, today we are experiencing the Rising event. Um, so I explained it a little bit in the video previously where when they announced uh, the Rising event. Um, but the Rising event is basically the anniversary of Final Fantasy XIV where um, they transitioned from the 1.0 version to the 2.0 version and the fact that they they basic, basically, like, when the game first came out, um, it was really bad. They built up on a bad foundation to make the game better, and then they completely destroyed the game and remade the game completely. Um, in the game world of Eorzea, um, it's known as the Calamity, where a meteor f fell, caused a bunch of destruction, and hatched Bahamut, who caused even more destruction. Um, so every year they celebrate it. Um, last year's event was pretty, pretty amazing, um, in the fact that they, um, they let you go up to the developer's room, essentially, and actually, um, talk with NPCs who were the developers of the game, um, basically complete, completely breaking the fourth wall, uh, in-game, which was really cool. Um, they said this year's event is going to be even better, um, so I'm really excited to see, uh, how they pull that off. Um, just walking into Ulda where the quest starts, um, there is a lot of decorations. A lot of these pillars, they have that meteor, they have the meteor logo on them there. I don't know, I always say I can't point, I guess I can point with my mouse here. Um, the, the, oh, I, no, I had my mouse cursor off. Never mind, I'm an idiot. Um, and then they also have this, this stage, which is pretty cool. That you can physically walk on, and it's like an actual physical item. Oh, you can jump up from over here. My game's lagging a bit for some reason. Um, but it's that's neat. Uh, but enough of the decorations. Let's let's actually go check out the quest here. God, I'm lagging really bad. It's not nearly as bad as it was like five minutes ago, but it's kind of bad. Whoa. Why is the rising event? Why does the rising vendor look like Benphilia? Uh, let's what she. Let's see what she actually has to sell first. So she's got the rising pillars. She's got the furnitures. Uh, Meteor Survivor, Heaven's Cracker, blah blah blah. Magic to Prism Meteor. As long as there's not fates involved. A play in three acts. Quest one, level fifteen. The leader of the Crystal Caravan is on the lookout for an exceptional adventure. Except. Oh, she's a girl. By the twelve, you there. You have the gait that looks of someone bound for greatness. Huh? What are you talking about? I reckon you're already taking part in our fair share of your fair share of daring deeds. Exciting escapades and astounding adventures. A worldly lad such as yourself might even make an audience swoon if only you were to try your hand at theatre. Believe me, I would know. I've spent a larger part of my life, even the most of my... <sighs> Fuck. I don't know why I try to do voices and read these things, because it's like, I always, I always get tripped up on words. Um... Eloquent? Ineloquent? Ineloquent. Is that the right word? Ineloquent doors into masters of the stage. Ineloquent bores to masters of the stage. Now, so I know immediately when I'm in the company of true talent, and you, my friend, have talent to spare. Who am I to ask why I am the leader of the Crystal Caravan, the realm's premier puppet troupe? Puppets? Puppets? With puppets? Wish I had puppets. As that happens, I'm just like in for an adventurer like you, you see the leading man as having trouble finding the proper inspiration for his role. I was wondering if perhaps we might draw upon your worldly experience to give him a push in the proper direction. 
Sure. I guess so. I don't know. Fucking... I don't know. Excellent. Excellent. Then, without further ado, let me introduce you to the rest of the troop. It's an honor to meet you, my lord. I hope we all time together it is fruitful on the anniversary of the realm's rebirth. Our troops shall depict the tragic events of the calamity. I shall play the role of the legendary adventurer, the warrior of light. Bitch, no, I'm just kidding. You were doubtless thinking. Uh, wait, I don't know which one of them is talking. <laughs> so I don't know which voice to do. Um, but I thought you were a puppet troop. Indeed you are, but we strive for ourselves apart from the rest. I urge you try to find another troop as lively as ours. You shall not. Okay, so it was it was him. Oh no, it was her. Of course the puppets will play a vital role in appearance. A partner provide the voices of enduring the most crudely carved pieces of wood. With a personality of its own. Okay, Blink. I'll be able to provide the actor here with the inspiration to keep us going. Right, a soulless performance is a shame to behold, but there is no show at all, at all without puppets or stage. You can go ahead and thank me for those two indispensable elements. The audience may not see my face, but I appreciate their applause all the same. Whatever, you're not an actor, you're a set builder. You're the kid in the you're the kid you're the kid in the drama club that couldn't act and they had him building sets. Although not to distur discourage the importance of that. It's with the talented crew that out we move on to the hearts of Beorzi's people and win their acclaim. It has been our dream to perform a play which lingers in the minds of the viewers long after the curtain falls indeed. It is my hope that this production will be remembered for years to come. Sure, I, I mean, yeah. Uh, but of course, the ambitious concept is nothing without a first-rate script, which is why I sought Anna Orzia's foremost author of stories, poems, and songs to write it. However, the draft we received from him is quite, shall I say, open to interpretation. Eh. In fact, I'm not sure if we would call it a script at all. It's more of a general outline of events. The others insist that it's a work of genius, but I can't see it. But you must look past the words on the page. A play is a living thing, and a playwright has given us the opportunity to let our imaginations run wild. Certain dramas are born from the reactions of the crowd, the passion of the actors, and yes, even weather can make a performance more lively. Stern dream, stern drama, yes, and will we deliver by the end of the acting, uh, it's boring, boring stuff, overwritten, like all of these events. Uh, first hand, you better than the adventure to aid me in the gathering of such tales. I understand the properties of the quicksand mistress, Mamomudi. That's a soft pop for adventures like yourself. She's like a wealth of stories to share, good sir. If you could ask her to regale our star with about a few, Chris Caravan will be in your debt. Oh, uh, sorry, excuse me. I mean, you yawn straight into the camera there. Uh, and they say the adventurers only seek their own glory. You have a gratitude friend. I reckon you might even put my puppets to shame, eh? Hold on, let's be off, shall we? To the quicksand. Why is this child such an important role? Okay, so here we go. Hi, Minfilia. Bye, Minfilia. Welcome, welcome. We're going to celebrate the anniversary of you. I couldn't have picked a better place. I say, what can I get from you? Let's see, why don't you talk to this guy about some stuff. I am a humble actor of the Crucial Caravan, and I plan to celebrate this momentous day by retelling the story of the Calamity. I come before you to hear any stories you may have of that day, so I might draw upon them 
to inspire my performance. Well, I have some. I'd be happy to oblige you, of course. Let me see, let me think. Uh, right five years back, was it? Uh, I remember a ticket where yesterday a lesser moon coming down, hard ground, bigger and redder by the moment. Uh, it was actually really cool to to play through that experience. I wish I had more videos of it because um, it was it was quite awesome. Indeed, the moon has fiercely as a fiercely the sun grew larger besides. Such a sight made many fear the end of the world was at hand, and rightly so. Makes me shudder to even think now, but it was all more shivering in fear. There were those courageous few who fought on against the odds. You speak of the warrior of light. He was worthy of song and celebration. Alas, none can remember what they look like, or even their names. Tis a shame, truly. Right, a damn shame. And the moral reason why your play is important. Even if we can't remember them, we can't, we can't, can't let them, or what they did for us, be forgotten. Of course, Mr. Ma 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 Ma. I thank you for retelling me the gravity of the responsibility. I shall do my utmost to ensure the memory of the warriors of light. Can you call on Bearden over in Drown and Winch yet? Of course you haven't. I'm sure he'd be eager to speak with you. Just remember to ask nicely. So we gotta go a bunch of different places. I don't like the sound of that. Brilliant suggestion. That settles it then. Let us away with Limsa Lemenza and speak with the bearded mistress. It's been a pleasure. Let's do it, Gil Sellers. Speak with Burden and the Drowning Wench. Okay, time to cut to that. Okay, here we are. Burden, Drowning Wench, Prospector, Propertyer. Uh, you're a festive look bear, ain't ye? If you ask me, there's no better place than to celebrate the anniversary of the old calamity than right here in the Drowning Winch. Well then, what's your poison? I sure want you to talk to this guy. Greetings, Mr. Burton. I've come to speak, seeking advice in my own, in my own celebration of sorts. A stage reenactment, re reenactment, of the very events this day commemorates. I would much appreciate if you could share with us any stories you might have. A reenactment, you say? Bugger me, that sounds like a grand idea. But before I get to rambling, I should warn ye, my memory ain't what it used to be. I remember the whole Alliance boys and girls marching off to Cardinal. Delamud was agent. Angen? Angen? Agent? Agent. Whatever. If I could pirate speak. Overheard like a sword. Overhead like a sword. About to drop from the sky and there'd be there'd been talk about calling upon the twelve to stay its descent. I could scarce imagine the fear that must have been overcome to set foot on a doomed battlefield. It wasn't a test for the faint of art, going toe to toe with the Galleons beneath the blood red moon. Every man and woman fought that day is deserving of all respect. I wasn't there myself, of course, but the survivors said that not could be heard over the roar of battle. That is, till Delamud burst open. And that thrice damned bastard of a dragon, Bahamut, showed itself. Bahamut the primal that set Azori aflame. No matter their strength and numbers, how could anyone hope to win against such an enemy? They couldn't. But then, just as they were all bouncing off, burned to cylinders, bracing to be burned to cylinders, <laughs> the dragon up and disappeared in a flash of blinding light. Ain't a soul alive who knows the how or why of it. Well, except I do. <laughs> I see, Mr. Burden. You have my thanks for sharing your story. I shall do my utmost to ensure that our audience remembers the bravery of the soldiers that day. Oh, knowing the full weight of my responsibility makes me all the more nervous. <laughs> Some might say that's a good thing. Any road... I ain't the only one yet to be asking about that day. I'm sure my men away the canopy. Currently canopy, but he happy to oblige your stories too. Of course. One can never have too much inspiration adventure. Let's depart from the Cunning Canopy once more. At once, Mr. Burden. Thank you again. After we get done, yeah.
and look into the past with the solace we take solace on the present and think of what the future may hold uh, pray forgive me at this time of year one cannot help but wax poetic how may I be of service I need to talk to this guy <laughs> it is an honor to make your acquaintance Mr. Mione Min Mione I've never been able to pronounce our name right I have been tasked with portraying the storied warriors of light in a play which will commemorate the events of the calamity. If you would be so kind to tell me of the Archon Louis Soi, a resident of this very city, I believe, I would be very grateful. Archon Louis Soi? Indeed, he resided here in Virginia. His sacrifice during the Battle of Karchno is something we shall never forget. I got a little emotional here. This was... That was a hard scene to watch. I think, I think for for those of you that started playing the game uh, post 1.0 or post the first iteration of the game, um, won't have the same connection to some of these NPCs uh, that uh, players like myself have. Uh, being a legacy player and played through 1.0, like. You really got to know Louis Swa, like everything about him, and you fought alongside him as hard as you could. And then at the end, um, knowing he gets taken in the Battle of Cartano is was really hard because you just become you can become so attached to um, like any RPG, like whether it's you know Final Fantasy, Dragon Quest, or. Um, Star Ocean, whatever, whatever it may be, like as a player, we get attached to these characters, and then when we lose them, like it's uh, it can be heartbreaking. Uh, perhaps if you were to tell me more of him and his relationship with the Warrior of Light. Oh, he had worked closely with the Warrior of Light even before Cartano, and on that fateful day, he took charge of the Alliance forces. They did not hesitate to fight under his command. Had they not been there to hold back the relentless assault of the Imperial Army, many believe that Master Louis Swan would have not even had the time to beseech the Twelve for aid. Alas, in the end, both Archon and the brave heroes gave their lives in our defense. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, though we can never thank them enough, during this solemn time, we must honor their sacrifice. <coughs> Damn it. Miss Louis Soi. Uh, to honor the bond that Louis Soi and the Warriors of Light shared, and to commemorate their brave deeds, I pledge to bear the soul of the sage, just as they risked their lives in the fighting. So too shall I act if my life depends on it. Ah, tearing up a bit. And I'm certain you will see this day in ovation. Give him serious gratitude, Mistress Minoe. Minoe? I think it's Minoe. Uh, as a you adventurer, I feel I must muse staring the last time to rehearse, 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 adventure, pay for the prudent from the others I should set work at once. Okay, speak of the pair. Guess I go back to speak of the Crystal Caravan Lady. Okay, so back in. Back here. Enough of the tears about Louis Swa. Welcome back. It appears your research certainly has success. Our future Warrior of Light is rehearsing the most enthusiastically. I owe you my thanks, good adventurer, for introducing us to such colorful and knowledgeable characters. Now we must begin preparations, of course. We have prepared a space for you as a guest of honor. May the tale of the calamity bring tears to your eyes and whoop in your heart. <laughs> Watch, he's disappeared. Chief, the bloody beam fell right on top. Oh, shit. Chief, the bloody beam fell right on top of God's be good. Hmm? What beam? Our lead was rehearsing the Battle of Cartano most passionately, I might add, and when he knocked one of the puppets, walked in, knocked into one of the puppets, 
into an unstable beam which then fell over and knocked him off the stage. He'll recover with time, but only the Twelve will know if he'll be fit for theatrics. Heavens forfend! Just when I thought our problems had been solved, to think his newfound passion was one who led to this. Although it grieves me greatly, I see no choice but to postpone our show. It would seem fate does not favor us today. Uh, I'll go back and break the sad news to the public. Wait. I just thought of something. With that adventure right here, don't we? We have an adventure right here, don't we? And with one no small amount of talent? <laughs> yes. You could channel your own experience and bring the heroics of the Warrior of Light to life. The more I look at you, the sure I'm, I'm sure, the more I'm sure of it. Man, I might believe you. You may be on something. Of course, the sands of reason. The actual adventure would be the most suited to play the role of one. Why did we not see it before? Well, I am the actual Warrior of Light, so I mean, we could expect a novice to move the audience. Still, I must admit. I really expect to disappoint fans. I suppose greatness does sometimes spring f from improvisation. Yes, perhaps if we have a chance after all. Besides, our voices should be able to carry the performance. So what say you? Will you take the stage? I don't get a, I don't get a choice. I just get take it. I don't get a choice. I don't get a choice. Well now, that's settled. I'll get the puppets on the stage ready. No more falling beams, you have my word. I certainly hope so, because I don't want a beam. A bit of stage fright, eh? Worry not, my friend. My troop is more than capable of bringing even the most wooden performances to life. Just, the, just act from the heart, and I'm sure you'll impress. Well then, whenever you're ready, just let me know and tell them. Okay, so quest one completed. Um, I'm actually kind of glad I'm recording this, because it sounds like it's going to be quite different here. Um, so, the Heavens Word Orchestra, or music, the Heavens Word, add to your orchestra collection. So, uh, that's what we got for the first quest. We're going to use that. Oh, it's repeatable. Show must go on. Fascinating. You get three meter shower fireworks. The crystal cavern leader is ready to put you on a, sh put on a show of a lifetime. That's weird. I wonder why it's repeatable. Maybe you can, like, do different things, act different ways. Ready to take the stage, are we? Perhaps you should be more or less complete whenever you're ready. Our carpenter is waiting near the wings to let you on the stage. Remember, all we ask is that you give us your most heartfelt performance and return here once you're finished. Oh, and don't forget, our future is riding on your shoulders. <laughs> okay. Hey, you know what? We know, we know you're a novice. Just, just do your best. It's fine. But remember, everything is riding on this. Everything. Oh god, that's why there's so many people like stacked up here. Whoops. That, that was my phone going off. How was my phone? Uh, Mr. Happy's live on Twitch. That's great. Ready to take the stage, eh? It's changing your costume and you'll be ready to start the show. Took me a bit of work to adjust it to your size. Let's hope it brings you the hair of the hair on you. Uh, now the rest of us will be following your lead. And my phone fell. Uh, follow your lead, but don't put too much pressure on yourself. I'll pick up your phone, okay? Okay, Blaine. After all, just act from the heart, and we'll make the best of it. You always do. Now go on, and good luck. Let's play. Let the play begin. I'll be cheering you from the wings. <laughs> it was the year of 1572, of the sixth astral era. A terrible catastrophe known as the Calamity threatened to bring untold destruction to Eorzea. To Eorzea. Oh my god, look at those guys. 
What? Uh, I wish I had that damn minion. <laughs> I see somebody that I don't have that minion because it's impossible to get now. At the same time, the Garlean Empire overran the Cardinal Flats. The three great city-states formed a grand alliance. They had they that they might repel the aggressors, and that their puppets at their <laughs> at their puppets and see that their peoples through these dark times. Look at his mimics. And the many among the many who fought that day was a warrior whose noble deeds give others the courage to carry on. A warrior who is willing to sacrifice himself to save the many. A warrior of light. That's just like the that's like the Power Ranger armor. Proud sons and daughters of Garlemald, we shall purge this land of its blight. But first, let us crush this pathetic army under our heels of our boots. <laughs> yeah, like, push it, just push it. The two armies clashed under the spectacle, the specter uh, of the sta stag, stagwine? Jesus, I, I should just not try to narrate these because I'm so bad. Uh, I can't read good. Sir, but we'll read the script anyway. Uh, the Warrior of Light led the band of hardened adventurers into the, the desperate melee, trying to stem the tide of the relentless onslaught. One's dead. Oh God. They fought until the flag. They fought until the flagging and wary, the moon of Dalamond waxed over fuller, as it burst in open to reveal the terrifying truth of what slumbered inside. The Dread Worm Bahamut! Oh my god, look at it! <laughs> yes, from within the flaming moon emerged the Dread Primal Bahamut. Freed from his prison, he unleashed his seething rage upon the land, engulfing Eorzea in flames. <laughs> oh god! Our intrepid hero was helpless to the fact that such power and the force of Bahamut's assault left him battered and breathless. But just as the sun was to set on Eorzea's fate, a voice called out, saving our brave champions from certain doom. <laughs> it was the voice of, uh, it was the voice of Archon Louis Swa. Look at him. Oh man, there he is. <laughs> Indeed. It was the Archon Louis Soir's voice that called out over the endless battlefield. The intruded, the intruded scholar and compassionate commander who came from far-flung Charliand to deliver us to salvation. Twelve above, I beseech thee, lend me your strength and seal Bahamut within the Dalamad once more. But lo, Bahamut's power was too great, and Louis Swar's ritual failed. No! Uh, <laughs> that hurts a little bit. The end of Eorzea was at hand, but in that moment of darkness despair, the Archon entreated the gods once more. Hearken to his plea, they imbued the Warrior of Light with the Twelve, with their divine strength. Once more, our hero rose and stood unfas unf <laughs> unfletching unfinching unfletching against Bahamut <sighs> that's not how it happened Rejuvenated by the Archon's prayer, the Warrior of Light rose anew. He turned his face to the Red Bahamut and unleashed his most powerful weapon. A single pithy quote. You don't need a reason to help people. <laughs> what? <laughs> what was that? I should have said something else. <laughs> Bahamut was overwhelmed with empathetic, <laughs> empathetic words of the legendary thief. 
villager thief so moved that he was breath caught his throat, leaving him unable to weak and any more havoc of the Oizir. Huzzah! <laughs> that was not very good. Oh man, I messed that up so bad. I should have missed <laughs> with the other one. I guess I don't care. Ready to take the stage? Uh, check your oh, I have to speak with him again? Did I mess up the play completely? Did I mess it? <laughs> oh, that's not how it's supposed to go then. Did it? Did it glitch out, or do I actually like? Oh man. Okay, I'll just cut to where I messed up. Ah. But lo, Bahamut's power was too great. And Louis Wall and Ritual but failed. <laughs> Harkening to his plea, they imbued the warrior of light with her divine strength once more. Our hero rose and stood unflinching against Bahamut. Bahamut was slain with a slingle blow. Brave champions, I leave the rest in your hands. If I can but see you to a new future, I should want nothing more. Loose all final words join the prayers of every Eorzean, and the twelve bestowed upon the warrior of light their blessing. With the fate of the realm resting on his shoulders, our hero lashed out with one last desperate attack imbued with the power of the gods themselves. Like, ah! <laughs> this is much better. There's always he has saved. Warrior of light, the realm is in your debt. The threat has been vanquished. And I hope you can return the hearts of the people. The brave you are here also illuminate the future of the realm. I'm so cool. <laughs> uh, sorry, I'm totally, <laughs> I'm totally tearing up here a bit. It's emotional. This game's emotional. Hell emotional. I knew you'd succeed up there. Even so, I didn't expect that you'd do that well. He overthinks it, Venturer. <laughs> There's still clapping. Well, what are you waiting for? Go back out there and give your adoring fans what they want. <laughs> like what? I, I didn't really do anything. Uh, you're still new to this. You're still, you're still new to all of this, aren't you? It's called a curtain call. Now's your chance. Bask in the well deserved applause. Show your crowd your lovely face. <laughs> would you listen to that? How long do you think they would clap if he, rem if he remained on stage? <laughs> For as long as he deserves, I gather. It's not often that one has the opportunity to be in the presence of such a radiant actor. Is it as if he was the warrior of light himself was standing there? <laughs> He's totally showboating. Which is probably what I would do. Talk to her again. I must say there's a certain accent before blessing it. Blah 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 blah. I'm, okay, start over, start over. I must say, you certainly exceeded our expectations. Perhaps our little accident before was but a blessing in disguise? Either way, however you might think, on behalf of one member of the Crystal Caravan. And it would seem you have one particularly passionate fan that would offer his passionate thanks. He has left a message just for you. Oh, is it a new quest? 
Yeah, ooh, okay, there's my minions. Wind up Krill and do something, okay. This will probably be the last, last of the three. This is going to take some editing, because I've been recording for almost a little over 45 minutes now. Our Lady Man returns, I see. Once again, I must say that you give quite a memorable performance, so memorable in fact that the playwright himself has expressed his admiration. Although he will soon be departing Ulda, he's very, he very much wished to speak with you before he boarded the airship. Go now, you might catch him. <gasps> I got to catch him. Oh, I was gonna. I literally almost ran right past this. I was literally gonna be like, do do do. You know what? This is where, this is where we broke the fourth wall and entered the. Entered the developers, the the eleventh, the fifteenth floor, the fourteenth floor, whatever it was. That was last year. That was last year. It was the same spot. Greetings, my friend. When I said quilt to parchment, I reckon the story of the calamity. I did not imagine you would be cast as the warrior of light. I knew it. I knew it was going to be the wandering minstrel. Which is to say that you were unfit for the role. Which is not to say you're unfit for the role. I contrary, I could not have hoped for a more talented thespian to bring my words to life. To a man, the audience was moved beyond words, and I found myself unable to stop clapping, even after you had left the stage. Well, I don't know why I'm getting so emotional over this. I'm sorry. I'm totally sorry. Uh, I can imagine the experience you must have drawn upon to inform your act acting. After today, I suspect many shall call you Warrior of Light in earnest. Are we going to get taken again? Although the calamity was a terrible tragedy, it has also served to sow the seeds of hope for the future. Hope in the form of countless brave adventurers, much like the Warriors of Light, who even now protect Eorzee with their lives. As much as I would like to see you take the stage time and again, I am certain you will be more of the realms as its protector. As an adventurer, for my part, I shall continue to regale others with songs telling of your deeds. Yeah, there's like so few that actually know that the player yourself is the Warrior of Light. The road ahead will be fought with hardships, of this I am certain. If you ever find yourself in the midst of a crisis, remember the events of the Calamity. Remember how hope was born from despair and continue your fight that I might someday hear your hero heroics. almost said heretics. <laughs> That's the wrong word. Three this time. Neat. Uh, so we're not breaking the fourth wall this year and getting taken somewhere. And back to what's her face over here. Have you spoken to the Wandering Minstrel? Splendid. Ah, but there is one last member of our troop who would offer you his thanks. Why, none other than the Starcross Leading Man, first released from the infirmary. <laughs> when that beam took me out of commission, I was positively crestfallen. It is no matter, it is no small blessing that you were able to form the show into such a claim. But alas, but alas and alack, I was confined to the bed. In from this Frondale's 
Fronisteri? Fronist? Fronisteri? Fron. What? Unable to witness your stunning performance with my own eyeballs. <coughs> uh, the Kurgian has instructed me to refrain from taking the stage until I am fully healed, but I intend to slay, stay limber with some light rehearsing, and I certainly intend to watch your next appearance. Yes, yes, you simply must reprise your role. We've received countless inquiries of your adoring fans, all curious as to your next performance will be. The puppet theater is a simple matter to set up. Ask, and we can be ready in a flash. To prove how eager you are to join us again, I'll add a little bonus to your payment for this performance. I was expecting you to get paid. I... You certainly earned it. For all you've done for us, why not let us be the last time you can reward I can reward your performance. It would be an honor to tell our tale of heroism and hope to with you again. Quest complete. The third rise of charm. Let's see. The show must go on. So if you repeat the quest, it's just more of the same. More of the same, which is fine. Whoops, that's not what I meant to do. So, I think these are the new ones. Let's use them. Let's use one. Beep. That's kind of cool. Alright, so wind up Krill. She's terribly, terribly sorry to have kept you waiting. And dress up your Stola. Now with more... Uh, etheric enhancements. Let's see if I can get a good shot of him. Uh, okay, dress up your stola. This clockwork ottoman has been crafted at the behest of the Adventurer's Guild in celebration of the Rising, Eorzea's annual celebration of rebirth. Alphano Livier. Alph Alphano Livier was apparently more than happy to submit a, rogue, a rough sketch for the design, despite never being asked. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Which is pretty cool. Okay. Um, and then the Krill. The clockwork contraption has been crafted at the behest of the Adventures Guild in celebration of the rising or the celebration of rebirth. Uh, blah, blah, blah. The enormous feline ears attached to her hood are thought to represent Krill's ability to hear the whispers of the soul. Fascinating. Somebody's ruining my video over here. With this Dark Knight bullshit. So she's kind of cool, too. Um... So that's pretty much the uh, the rising event this year. Um, so they claimed it was supposed to be better than last year. Uh, this was still pretty cool. Uh, let's see, is that did you get any rewards for that achievement at all? Oh my gosh, it's taking so long. Um, I don't know. So I don't know if it was better than last year or not. No. Nope, so there's no. No items for the achievement. Or no, no rewards, rather. Uh, that's what I mean to say. Uh, but it was still pretty cool. Um, I really, I really liked that the fact that they got the uh, the player into the play and, and different things like that, which was really neat. Uh, and it was also actually. Um, Despite my video being almost an hour, I have to edit this down now. Um, despite it was, uh, it was actually pretty, pretty short, um, pretty short, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, I don't know. Uh, what do you guys think? Did you experience last year's rising event? Uh, and if you did, uh, do you think it was better than this year's? I think this year's was as good. Um, there was a lot of, um, there was a lot of emotional pulls to it. Uh, much more this year than than there has been in the past. Um, but let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Um, until next video, 
Be sure to be kind to each other, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.